This is the plaintiff, Joelle Conover. She says she hired the defendant to put up a fence to keep her dogs in her yard and her horses out of it. The guy did the work in drips and drabs. He kept asking her for more and more money along the way, and she lost confidence in his ability to complete the job. She fired him, had to find someone else, and is now suing him for the $5,000 she wasted by hiring him in the first place. This is the defendant, Christian Hopkins. He says he's only 19 and was starting up his business and he charged the plaintiff too little, so he needed more money for more supplies to complete the job. A few days after he started the job, the plaintiff fired him because she said he was too messy. Hello? Construction's a messy job. And he would have left everything clean if he'd been allowed to complete the job. Bottom line, there was no reason he should have been fired and he doesn't owe her a thing because all the money she gave him, he spent spent on supplies. He's accused of getting in over his head. All parties, please hit your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff hired the defendant to put up a fence that would keep her dog in and the horses out, but he jerked her around and kept the deposit. The defendant says he's only 19, so he charged her too little and needed more time to complete the job. It's the case of, I'm in over my head. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Ms. Conover, you're suing your former landscaper, I guess, Mr. Hopkins, for 5000 that you want paid to you because you say that's what he cost you by breaching your contract. What happened to you? What happened to you, sweetheart? I was supposed to make it yesterday, but I fell. I had a seizure. On the way to court? I was walking here. Oh, wow. Seriously? Yes. I told you court's a dangerous business. <laughs> Did you get stitches? No. It's just swollen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ms. Conover, uh, talk to me. How did you find him, and what is it you employed him to do? I had found Christian on Facebook, via Facebook. I was looking for someone to put in a removable patio. Um, What's that mean? It means that there were pipes that ran under my house, and if they needed to be worked on, we needed something that we could pull up easy versus okay. putting a full concrete So what slab was it going to be made of, this removable patio? Uh, pavers, 12 by 12 patio pavers. Okay. What he was going to do, they were basically going to follow the tape we had up because I live on a 15-acre horse farm, and the horses come and go and walk on the patio, and I wanted my space. Right. So what we had was a piece of electric fence tape up for my patio to keep the horses out. And what, how would he physically put the pavers down? He Just lay them down on the was, ground? He was going to dig out the foundation three inches, right. lay down crushed stone, then put stone dust or paver sand down, then the stones. Okay. Then put in a fire pit, then a picket fence. How old are you? 19. And what experience would that young man who is 19 and looks 12 have in doing any of the things that you wanted him to do? I am not a landscaper, so when no, I... No, but you're... A, a, a satanic human being, right? Like yes. You, so what is it? Did you get prices from other people that were much, much higher? I got prices from other people that were out of the ballpark. And when he came to my house on the 22nd of May to look at the job, and we told him what we wanted, he had said he would do it for $1,500. Right. We have a saying in Spanish, lo barato sale caro. The chief comes out expensive. Oh. So did that include materials or that was exclusive? That of was everything. How could it include material? How do you know that there's no way that basically? Could be? basically I mean, I, you know, he's 19 and he's misquoting a job. But what's your excuse? You know, it's impossible for it to be done for we, that. How much were the materials? We had given him money to purchase materials before we went away. Then, so what you did was you gave him a deposit of how much? We gave him a deposit of six hundred dollars, and then we were going to give him the rest when it was finished or when we came okay. back because we went away for six days. And then when you came back from your vacation. According Tuesday, to you, it's all supposed to be done, and when you come back, what do you see? Um, a pile of pavers that he had pulled up sitting on my concrete foundation for the house and in front of my rhododendron bush, and nothing else was done. Okay, and so you call him and you say what? He came over to the house, and I took him in front of Kevin, because Kevin has been here for the whole duration. And who is Kevin? Kevin is a friend of mine. Okay. And I said, why isn't the job done? You said you would have this done. We gave you six days while we were on vacation that you would have this done. And he says, well, I bought supplies. So he didn't say I needed supplies. 
he said he had bought supplies with the 600 we had given him. And I said, where are the supplies? Okay, so were there any supplies at your house at that point? Uh, half a yard of crushed stone. Okay. So, so I said on. to him, I said, if that crushed stone just cost me $600 for half a yard, he says, no, but it was $45. And I said, well, where's the rest of the money we gave you? And what did he say? He paid his bills with it. Okay, and then what happened? I said, well, you were supposed to use that. That was a bad business practice. I said, you were supposed to use that money to buy supplies to get your job done. Right. Not take it home and pay your personal bills with it. Right. Just, yeah, just like a 19-year-old, right? So we explained. He's like, well, I'm going to need more money. And my other half was like, I wouldn't give it to him. I wouldn't give it to him. I wouldn't get I'm like, listen, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. So I gave him another $600 cash to go finish buying supplies to get the job done. So he spent the, the whole day running around getting supplies and then on... Did he bring the supplies there? He, he did bring what he bought to my house. Which is what? The fence posts, the lattice, the planters, the latches we never saw, the locks we never saw, but they were on the receipt as bought and paid for. Um, I think that okay. was it. And how much, when you saw the receipt, how much did the receipt total to? Um, the receipts... How much did the receipts total? The um, it, it was just probably. It was a little over four hundred. Can someone answer? It was oh, I'm sorry. Six hundred. You say six hundred. Show me the receipts. Because I. You say six hundred. She says four hundred. Yes. What was it? It was right around. Do you, there. Don't you have copies of the receipts? I do not. How are you going to really do your taxes now. if you're not deducting your expenses from the amount that you're going to report that she paid you? You have to keep records, unless you were just planning on defrauding the IRS. You're supposed to keep records for a business. That means that you keep the expenses so that you know what you can report as profit because that gets deducted. So then what happens? So then come, I told him that, I said, you know, if the job was too much for you, he said, nope, you're going to love it when it's done. You'll because be I'm 19 and I have all kinds of experience building. He said, that what we're... kind of experience do you have building fire pits and not much, but enough, I guess. What's enough? How many fire pits have you built? Uh, probably three, four. Three or four? How did you have occasion to build fire pits? I have, and family members. Did you get paid for any of these fire pits, or? No. You know how many fire pits he's built? No. I'm going to tell you, all right? <laughs> but now, how do we get to the frustration that I see in the texts on June 3rd? What happened between May 28th and June 3rd? So... After we talked to him and said that was a bad business practice, taking the money that you're supposed to buy. It's really none of your business. When you give a deposit to a legitimate businessman, all right, you don't know what they're using the money for. You're treating him like a child because you hired a child and you feel the ability to treat him like a child. So I don't really want to hear any more about how you scolded him. I want to hear what work happened between May 28th and June 3rd. So he went out. He was digging the foundation. He says, well, I'm going to need more stone. And he had brought it in via pickup truck. And obviously, the area that he had dug out was going to take more than a pickup truck load. So I told him, I said, look, I will go down and personally buy the stone because there's a sand pit down the road from our house. So I went down and spent another $170 on eight yards of stone. I came back to the house and I said, Christian, you need to have this dug out by Friday. If you need to stay here and work with my lights on to finish it, you need to finish it because you got eight yards of stone coming Saturday morning. And? Didn't get finished. Okay. Was didn't, he working there from uh, until what time? He came and went. He'd come for a couple hours and then he'd leave for hours and then not come back. So the delivery happens and then what? what so I, the weekend comes, Saturday, come, I'm gone for the weekend because I'm You gone for the weekend again when I'm, the delivery was happening and all these problems are happening with your landscaper? I had commitments that I, I don't couldn't, blame me. That's why know? I would have delayed the delivery. So they brought the stone on Saturday. He didn't come at all during that weekend. How do you know? Because I came home Saturday afternoon. So where did they put the stone? The stone was dumped in the patio, where the patio was going to go. Where he had dug out, the stone was dumped there but forward towards okay. the edge. And then what So happened? the back half that wasn't dug out, he had to come back on Monday and finish digging that out. So he comes Monday. So he comes Monday. I said, don't touch the stone until you have... It, it was like putting the cart before the horse, this whole entire procedure. You know, he'd get That's bored... That's why I would have delayed the he'd delivery He'd get bored with stone. one thing and then go on to another. It's like, do one thing before you start another. So we finished digging it out, and we left with my dogs to go to an event. So the next thing I know is I can get a call from the girl at the horse farm saying, your landscaper's leaving and he wants more money. I'm like, that's it. Done. So done. Not happening. It's not happening. And that was it. So I would say the day after that, I called him and I said, that's it. You're all done. And when I came home Monday, 
after. But you had already paid him, according to you, $1,200. You would have had this whole thing completed if you just given him a chance to finish for just an additional $300. And you had, you seem to have tremendous control over him, even if he's disappointing you, kind of like a parent-child relationship where you're telling him exactly how to do the job you hired him to do, and he's like, okay, okay. Then he turns, it turns out, because I saw that he texted you, and he said, are you home? Because I need to come by. I need a small payment because I need money. And you say, not happening. I've paid you $1,200. And then he says, all right, it's, it's kind of pathetic, really, because um, it's very unprofessional to be asking for more money when you haven't finished the job. She's not your mother, even though she acts like it. It's not, that's not how we're supposed to work. But then he asks for the more money June 3rd. On, Ju on June 4th, you're telling him about the weed paper and stretch it out and do this and do that, blah, 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 at 7. And then at 9, you say you're fired. So what happened? So this 19-year-old kid underbid the job. Does he still have to do a competent job? Well, under the renegade law of California. Or New York. Or New York. Um, it has to, if you agree to do a job, you have to follow through with it. You so. have to follow through, but you have to do as good a job as if he would have charged retail. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, okay, I got a yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, he bid for the job. He should produce for exactly what he bid for. Even if he's going to lose money. Even if he's going to lose money. I mean, as a business, a business owner, he should have anticipated yeah. what he would need. He's 19. I know, but. I Tough luck. Poor kid. Okay, going inside the guard room. We got home Monday from our dog function, and we came home to a pile of gravel that he had taken out of the patio and it was a bucket load, a tractor bucket load, and was dumped behind my house. Um, I, I was shocked, I'm like, why the hell is this there? But apparently that's not why you fired him, because in the morning, after you see that, you were still giving him instructions. So I say again, what happened between seven when you gave him instructions, and nine when you said, you're fired, because you've left a mess in my house. He's in the middle of a job. It was basically, putting the cart before the horse. He was digging out and throwing dirt where he needed still to dig. And then he was digging out and putting dirt where it wasn't supposed to go. So we ended up having to grab the bucket loader and haul away four loads of and dirt. And you think that I'm gonna make this 19 year old pay you $2,900 in supplies because apparently the job requires $2,900 in supplies? The one that he quoted for 1,500? Did you pay somebody $900 to finish the patio? Is that I did. The, so do you have the receipt for that? I do. And then you want him to give you back all of the money that you paid him so that all of those supplies would also come out of his pocket that you got to use. What world is that that you're asking fair in? I just wanted the job done and completed. Then why and don't you just wait another two or three days and see how it went? Because, because it wasn't the, the leap of faith you already took. It's like you jumped and then in midstream didn't want to be in the air, but you had already paid $1,200. I'm just so lost at to, as to because why. Because it was just, it was a mess. The whole entire thing was. Well, no, was, it's a mess. Construction's a mess. a mess. Yes, construction is a mess. Yes, that, that happens when you're in the midst of building something. Yeah. This is the receipt you have? That's the receipt I got from the gent who did it. I mean, there's no, like, business that has an invoice that has. No, he was just. Shows, a, it's just a little receipt book with writing on it. All right. I'm going to find, uh, based on what I've heard, that you did not have cause to fire him. And it is you who breached the contract when you decided that you didn't want him to come back and finish the job. Therefore, I am not going to order him to return the 1200 that was already paid to him because he is entitled to have the benefit of the deal he struck, which is to be there, finish the job, and earn that 1200 plus the other 300 See, the thing he did wrong was not have it done within the time, and you forgave that. And then the thing he did wrong was, or distasteful, was ask for more money, and you didn't give him more money. And then he said, okay, and then he was ready to work. And then you give him orders at 7, and then you fire him at 9. So I don't find that he breached a con contract. I find you did, and therefore I'm not ordering him to return any money, much less give you more money beyond what you had paid him. Verdict in this case for the defendant. Well, the defendant got fired from his job, but he does not have to give you $5,000. Nope. What are you thinking? It was shoddy work. It was shoddy work. I wanted the job done. He quoted a price. He had a time frame, and it wasn't met. But you breached the contract. I got sick of waiting. I got sick of waiting. I got sick of the mess. 
That's the judge says you lost your patience and that cost you. Yeah, but you should I have given him another day or two. No, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. You have to show up to do the work to get the work done, and that wasn't done. Well, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. You learned a lesson. Mr. Hopkins, I think you have learned a lesson, too. Yes. Are you still in the construction business? No, I'm uh, taking my EMT class now. Okay. Moved a little bit. You've moved. Yes. All right. So you're not going to be doing any of this kind of stuff for a while, right? On the side, but no, not as main job. I think you've learned a lesson, though, from this experience, haven't you? I would yes. hope. Of course. I mean, she expected Definitely. you to do the work. Yes. And get it done on time. Yes. And you just didn't do that. Yes. I think you're lucky not to be ordered to pay her some money. Give it back. Yeah. Don't you think so? No. You don't think so? Yeah, I guess so. I think so. you're lucky. Okay, good enough. Thank you very oh, much. So she breached the contract. He's allowed to keep uh, the deposit because that would have ultimately been his profit.